All right. Well, if you have your Bibles, open them up to Proverbs chapter 10, Proverbs 10, verse 19. And, uh, you know, for you Bible students, the book of Proverbs really is the wisdom. It's wisdom of God. It's wisdom from God. And I love Proverbs because I know I need more wisdom every single day. I need more wind wisdom and the challenges that are around us uh, tell us that. But here in Proverbs, and this week we're looking at the words that we speak. What does the Bible say about our tongue? And I'm not sure if you realize this, but there are a lot of scriptures from Genesis to Revelation that talk to us about the power of the tongue, right? And here in Proverbs 10, 19, listen, it says, in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. In the multitude of words, sin is is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. Listen, uh, the more we speak, the more vulnerable we are to sin. The more we speak, right, the more we speak, the more vulnerable we are to sin. You know, maybe you have a job that doesn't require you to speak as much. And, you know, you're you're in a, you know, a trades field, something like this, well, hey, praise the Lord. According to God's word, you've got a better chance of sinning less. The more we speak, the more vulnerable we are to sin. And listen, you and I, you know, need to realize from Scripture that we have to make a volitional choice to listen more and speak less. We have to actually make a, a, a choice to Listen more and speak less. Now, you know, you've probably realized this, but you, according, you know, God has made you with two ears, one mouth, right? And there's a reason for that, right? You and I, we should listen twice as much as we speak. We should listen twice as much as we speak. It's important that we learn to listen. And Proverbs here tells us that in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. The word multitude is abundance. You know, when our words become abundant, we're going to sin more. There's going to be lies that are told, right? There's going to be compromises that are made. Uh, We're going to find ourselves, you know, even in prayer, right? Do you pray more by yourself or, you know, when you find yourself in a group of people ready to pray, do do you find yourself wanting to monopolize that time because you haven't taken the time in your private prayers to really communicate your heart to God? Now, in the multitude of words, the Bible says sin, which is interesting. This is a different Hebrew word than we normally see for sin. It's the Hebrew word pesha. And it's a revolt or rebellion. You know, often in, you know, as a dad, I've experienced this in parenting my children, is often when someone does something wrong, they're trying to explain it away, right? There's a lot of words and stories and excuses to explain why they did what they did, right? And And really, it's just that there's like a revolt inside. Rather than saying, you know what? I need to take responsibility for my actions. It's my fault. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Right? Rather than that, there's a multitude of words where sin in that situation is not lacking. But the Bible says, but he who restrains his lips is wise. That word restrains means to hold back. To hold back. You know, There are times when, you know, in Proverbs, it says this, a fool vents all his feelings, right? Somebody says, but I feel this and I need to talk about it. Well, that's what the world says. But according to God's word, a fool vents all his feelings. You know, you and I, we need to sift our feelings and our thoughts through through the litmus test of God's word. Right? And that's going to bless us. It's going to make us profitable. It's going to make us successful in these things. This is what God's word teaches. But it's he who restrains his lips. And the Bible says that person is wise, is intelligent, is circumspect. You know, one thing the enemy wants to do is he wants to make us short-sighted. He wants us just to look at what's happening in this little microcosm of the next 30 seconds in our lives. But God says not that we're to worry about tomorrow. 
But we're not to be short-sighted. We're to see the big picture. We're to see, wait a second, I need to calm down. I need to get control of myself, right? I need to love the people that are around me. I need to speak life. I need to make sure that what I'm saying is true. I need to make sure, you know, that if I'm willing to say this behind someone's back, that I would actually talk to the person about this. These are important things that God has given you and I. It's amazing that he's put this responsibility in our hands to speak life, to speak truth to those around us. And I pray that you would do just that. Uh, You would speak truth. And one of the simple practical ways the Bible gives us here in Proverbs is eh, cut down on how many words you speak, right? Think about it. Think before you speak. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? And is kind? Is it kind? Think. And Father, I pray you'd bless your people. I pray, Lord, as your people, that we would speak forth life to others and that we would think before we speak. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.